This Dead Island 2 build is all about maiming zombies with insane attack speed, but I don't want to show you too much of it in case YouTube demonetizes the video, so let's pretend there's some awesome combat footage right here. Hey, I can see our hotel from here. Oh. Alright, cool, let's go. Let me know your thoughts on this build in the comments down below and what build you're running in Dead Island 2. So this build is but it does also work with Jacob because they do have overlap in some of their skill cards that you will find, as well as with Jacob, his innate ability Feral, which Jacob gets a stackable minor damage boost when attacking quick succession, works perfectly with this sort of attack speed, main focus build that we're running as well. But I'm essentially playing as Danny. Now with Danny, we're not getting heaps of value out of her Thunderstruck innate skill, but we do get a fair bit out of Bloodlust. But the main purpose for this build really is maiming enemies and leaning into all of the maim skill cards which is a pretty easy effect to trigger on the standard zombies and then every time you maim an enemy you get health back you get a damage increase plus an attack speed increase so with all of those three things combined it allows you to maim enemies faster it allows you to attack faster and you can just slice through enemies very quickly we're combining that with some frenzy weapons as well as maiming weapons for a really fast attack feed a high amount of damage and just overall like this is the best build that i have found while tinkering with different skill cards and different play styles i tinkered with potentially leaning into the heavy aspect of danny's kit because of very innate skill thunderstruck but i didn't really feel that flowed well enough enough because of how slow some heavy attacks take and then I kind of found this like main focus that we kind of go for and because of Danny's blood loss you regain more health when you slay multiple zombies in quick succession which is the focus of this build it all just kind of fit together perfectly and really works really well I think so let's go through the skills here now I am using dodge as my defensive ability as I personally prefer this over block for the flying kick I am using drop kick now originally I was using fly kick for this build but I decided to go with drop kick because of the value you get in some of the later stages of the game, especially with the zombies, I forget what they're called, the bursters, the ones that like explode because you can like kick them away from you and then they'll explode. That's sort of why I've just gone with drop kick. I'm using dash strike and I'm also using a couple of skills here for dash strike being the suction. So dash strike zombies to regain health as well as the lightning strike, which when I use that effect, I also electrify zombies with that. Now it does drain your health when you use the lightning strike, but because we gain health with the other effect, you kind of end up in the positive here anyway so it doesn't matter too much and in some regards i won't actually run the lightning strike and we'll talk about that in a little bit when we talk about autophage for the fury skills here i'm barely even using fury so it doesn't really matter too much i'm using the maim fury that my fury meter goes up when i maim enemies because this is main build but otherwise really doesn't matter all right moving on to the survivor skills now for the survivor skills the first one that i'm running is safe space so when you pop a med kit you get an explosion around you really great all-around skill to give you some protection when you do eventually pop those Serial Killer, which is a Danny and Jacob only skill card, which gives you a minor boost to damage when you slay a zombie, which we're going to be doing all the time because that's the main thing that you do in this game. Then we're also using Vivisuction, which we already just talked about, as well as Lightning Strike if we're using the Autophage Tier 3 setup or in other cases, Shin Shrapnel. So when you use Slide Attacks, you get a major boost to damage and you send regular zombies flying. So this is just a way to increase your overall damage at the start of encounters and to lower your Autophage while still having some effectiveness. Now, combining this with Breakdancer, a Slayer skill. Breakdancer gives you a moderate boost to agility and attack speed. So your initial attack when you enter encounters is higher than if you didn't have this skill. So that's why I like to combine those two if I'm not using the Autophage Tier 3. The Slayer skills otherwise is Surgeon. So when I maim enemies, I get a moderate boost to damage, hack and dash. So maiming enemies increase my attack speed as well as the Limb Reaper. So maiming enemies regains health. The Newman skills don't matter too much except for Corpse Blossom. So when zombies are slain that have Fire, Shock or Caustic active, they will have a powerful explosion so this is essentially the full setup here now the main goal here is to start combat with a slide so you're triggering the shin shrapnel and the other skill card for slides and then you just lean into maiming enemies to trigger all those maim cards and you get all those card triggers underneath your health bar you can see like the yellow health to show that they're all triggering at that effect now the autophage setup that i mentioned so typically i will run autophage three which when you slay zombies you get a boost to health and damage so you get further increases to your overall damage but this means you have very low health recovery and no HP regen, which is an issue in some of the really tough encounters. So depending on whether I'm going for just like general trash side questing, I'll usually run tier three. And then when I was doing main story or fighting harder bosses, I'll drop that to tier two or tier one. So then in those encounters, I actually do have some of that HP regen as it is important for them when you can't just maim heaps of zombies because in those encounters, when you're just fighting bosses and there isn't like other trash to fight to get that health back from maiming, then you really want to drop that autophage down and lean more into using your med kits for those encounters. 
For your weapons, there's two specific weapon types that you really want to focus on, though you can kind of use whatever you do feel like because you can maim enemies without having using one of these specific types. Maiming to weapon types is the main one that we're using. Now, this is obviously because maiming does target limbs. You get critical hits, so you maim enemies more often. You also regain stamina when you maim enemies, so you can lean into dash strike to regain health a little bit more as well. The other type is frenzy. So frenzy, rapid attacks, trigger critical hits, and a minor attack speed boost. So we lean further into that attack speed speed gain, a little bit of extra critical hits isn't bad. And with something like the Crescent Blades, you can get your attack speed like flying with this and just swing for like crazy amount of speed and just slice through enemies that I find really satisfying. Like you get that really good camera shake from all the hits triggering. It's super satisfying in my opinion. Now you can use other stuff like the Bulldozer or something like that. I also like the Nail Gun just randomly because it does help maim enemies as well, but that's kind of ranged enemies you can sort of use, you know, whatever, it doesn't matter too much, but that's the general weapon set up and then otherwise any other weapons that you do personally like. For weapon mods, I would just have a mixture of all of the different elemental types, but for the different perks, just the flat increased damage one, you honestly can't go wrong with, but I do personally like slaughter to increase limb damage and durability, a good combo effect there. Empowering isn't bad for the extra critical hit damage as well. And then lightweight isn't bad to increase your attack speed, but it does reduce your force, but we're not really leaning into force with this build, right? We're not trying to knock enemies off their feet like ruining their stability we're really just trying to slice through them and maim them which is essentially going to knock them down anyway like if you aim for the legs which you should be doing a lot of encounters anyway moving on to some tips for this build and that is honestly the first one is to aim for the legs now when you're aiming for like their chest you're not going to maim anything so it's really aiming for the limbs, right? Arms or legs. Legs is the easiest and it's also one of the best to trigger because you can like trip them down and they're on the ground so you don't have to kind of worry about them. Screamers and butchers are super annoying and they're really hard to actually get close to, especially when butchers run away or screamers are yelling at you. So range weapons are good here for those sort of encounters. I mentioned the nail gun earlier, which is personally my favorite, but any range weapon here will be great to kill those enemies so that you can prevent them from running away and healing in the butcher's case or just being a nuisance like the screamers are. Now, heavy attacks with Danny's Thunderstruck and her innate skill is still valuable like if you do trigger it and you get that forceful explosion there's nothing wrong with that plus if they have like a fire status effect applied you also get that fire explosion so a little bit of extra benefits there if you wanted to lean further into those heavy attacks and because of the flexibility of picking up you know one of those big bulldozer weapons and using something like that you can get value out of that but because i'm leaning into maiming enemies it's not really the focus for this build but danny does have that extra value in her kit that you can lean into heavy attacks and heavy attacks are good to trigger maims as well like if you've got a maiming weapon and you line up a heavy attack you can almost always guarantee to maim enemies with that effect for the apex enemies as well maiming is how you get the resource drops from them it's like increases your chance of getting their specific resource which you can use for like your mods and perks and stuff later so it's worth using some sort of a main build for this as well and it gives you extra benefits in that regard for focusing on like their arms or their limbs to try and knock them off so you can get you know their blades dropping or the oversized arm from the big guys that sort of thing but plenty of value here let me know what you think of this danny build this is just a quick video to talk about the build that i was using for my dead island 2 playthrough but let me know what you think thanks for watching this video till the end thank you to our members for supporting the channel my name is norza and i hope you have a good day